Lancaster goes to the floor. Too hard. Tipped up. No good. Tipped up again. No good. Phipps with the rebound. The Eagles have to foul to get the clock stops. Maybe still two possessions only have under a minute. As you can see. Foul on the perimeter. Remember that stretch? Midway through the fourth quarter, when the Yankees couldn't get a shot to drop, they had five close-in tries. That time, Lancaster had three all by himself and couldn't get it to roll in. Third foul called on Moore. And Lester Jackson, 0 for 1 from the line tonight. 0 for 2, he missed a big one and one there. Oh, but a big rebound by Lloyd. To send him right back to the line. 45 seconds left, and Jackson will get another try. Fourth foul on Moore. Well, they really have no choice but to foul and stop the clock with 46 seconds to go. But the Eagles have to do a better job of hustling and going after the loose balls and the rebounds. Aggies 12 of 24 from the line. Jackson just missed a one and one. Misses again. This time, the rebound knocked out of bounds, and it'll go to the Yankees. Lester Jackson 0 for 3 from the line. Those are big misses for St. Agnes. The Eagles have some time here. They do need a three. Drive into the lane. And a foul call that will send Stalo to the line. called against Phipps. That was really a smart play by Stalo to go to the line, or to go to the basket rather than pick up the foul. If you don't get the basket, at least you can stop the clock and hopefully make the free throws. The Eagles have shot just six free throws. Stalo's one for one. The Eagles are six of seven from the line. Dick Cazzoni hoping that his team can hit their free throws here in the final minute. It's a one possession lead. They're going to foul. McCoy is three of six from the line. McCoy's nickname is Real. <laughs> I like that. It fits. Moore has just fouled out with two points. Marlon McCoy with three points. Now, if you're Dave Walker, you've got some timeouts. Maybe you take one here. Maybe not. Another miss. A big rebound by Davis, and now he is fouled. And the foul called against Matt Sorry. You know, the difficult thing about these St. Agnes misses is that they've been such, you know, bad misses and that they've come off long and hard. They I mean they haven't even been close. If free throws are close, usually the rebound doesn't go off that far if they're a soft, nice shot with backspin. But these have been bricks. I'm telling you, the rebounds come out far. The Eagles can't even get position to get the ball. That's what I'm talking about. Oh no! Four straight missed one and one opportunities, but a big follow-up basket. Costly air by the Eagles there. That probably will be the play that's Stalo gets the basket. He's had nine in the second half, 15 in the game. It's still just a one possession lead with 13.8 seconds left. What a big hoop for Lloyd. It's been the offensive rebounds off the free throws, off the missed free throws by St. Agnes that have really broke Maple River's back, especially that last big bucket. Kamani Lloyd with a big follow-up basket. Let's Hockey check in with the huddle. Charlie, you come towards, Charlie, listen. Charlie, you come towards the ball. Release. Okay, Kamani, you're here. You come right to the ball. Put the inbound to him. Now, Marlon, you got to come back right around in this area here. Okay? And it's a double team. Okay, let's see you come up in here towards the top of the key. You don't want to throw the ball back underneath your basket. Okay, stay strong. Are we, are we underneath? No movement? No, don't move. Okay, you yeah, just move. come to the yeah, ball move. release. If you got him deep, go ahead and throw it. Otherwise, relax and hit Kamani. Okay. Don't though. Two three. Three. Ask him when you want down there if you can. That's 
It's the St. Agnes huddle. They lead it by three, 13.8 seconds left. I'm not sure at this point it matters much who they foul. <laughs> the Aggies as a team have really struggled. Well, and fouled. there's the foul right there. They foul quickly again to stop the clock. But, you know, even one free throw here is going to take it from a three-point game to a four-point game. And really, for Maple River, it's a really a long shot at that point. Lloyd, the one Aggie who has shot free throws relatively well. In fact, he's five for six from the line. McDonald's first foul. They've already missed three straight one-and-ones. That one got in somehow. That may be the free throw that takes away Maples River's hopes of being able to defend their Class A title. Eagles really need to hurry. Two-point try, nobody home. And a foul will send Jemay Fitz to the line with 4.3 seconds left in their standing behind the Aggie bench. ashamed of this St. Agnes team is very strong. It's obviously heartbreaking for them to consider that they're not going to continue in the way that they did last year. Aaron Stallo falling out. 15 points. He's about the only Eagle player who scored well in the second half. He had nine points in the second half. Pressure's off. <laughs> and the Aggies start making their free throws with 4.3 seconds left. Fifth two of six from the line. There will be a new champion in Class A. shown by both of these teams tonight. A great basketball game. And Irene gets to watch her grandson play <laughs> in the championship bracket at least one more time. She sure does. 63-56. <laughs> St. Agnes improving its mark to 23 and 5. They made it an adventure in the fourth quarter with a lot of missed free throw opportunities. And Maple River in the tournament for the third straight year will drop down into the consolation bracket with a seven-point defeat. This is the 1994 Minnesota State High School Basketball Tournament. watched my neighbors wear out a lot of lawnmowers. It's been over 20 years now, and my snapper's still going strong. Snapper is the original built-to-last rider, and today's snappers offer more value than ever, with bigger engines and lots of cutting options. I bet I've recommended Snapper to over a dozen people. Find out why Snapper riders cut more lawns than any other brand in the world. Anything else, and you're taking home the wrong lawnmower. Read sales and service on Nikolai Repair. There is a business where goals aren't measured by quarters, but by generations. A business where the board meets under open sky. For this business, DuPont created Accent, the herbicide that protects corn from foxtails, quackgrass, and wild proso millet, and protects the land as well. Because in this business, the Accent is on tomorrow. The car is called Ford Tempo, but really it should be called Ford Value. 
Introducing a special $300 lease bonus from Ford on one of America's best car values. Get five passenger seating, front wheel drive handling, air conditioning, tilt steering, AM FM stereo, and save $780. And now, a special $300 lease bonus. But hurry, this special offer is for a limited time only. Ford Tempo, by any name, it's a great car value. See you today at your local Northland Ford dealer. Yeah. This is TCM. Who? Mr. Miller, if you could change the way banks do business, what would you change? I'd make them have a, a lot more cash machines mm -hmm. in more locations mm -hmm. for emergencies. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. TCF banking the way you want it. Neither team scored a great deal in the second half. St. Agnes started the second half down by a point. They end up winning by seven points to advance to the semis tomorrow afternoon against Westbrook, Walnut Grove. St. Agnes' team is fun to watch. I don't know that uh, Dick Gazzoni particularly cared for their free throw shooting in the second half when they had a chance to wrap it up, but they advanced to the semis nonetheless. And Jim Gilliland has some special guests standing by. Jimmy? Thanks, Dick. Dick Gazzoni is on my left. Lester Jackson on the right. We'll start with the coach. And you're heaving a sigh over here. I know it was a, a long wait for you guys to get on the court today. And the, you had a lot, carrying a lot into this. St. Agnes tradition hadn't been to the state. And, well, what are your feelings right now that it's over? Well, I'm just glad we survived tonight. It was a tough game. Uh, Maple River's got a great club. We just played our hearts out. It didn't look like things were going to go for us. Our kids looked a little frustrated the first half. We're only down by one. And, we didn't play very well at all, and then the third quarter, they had a little bit of a run, and then we cut it back to one at the end of the third quarter, and then uh, the fourth quarter, obviously, our kids just really stuck it and uh, as far as our heart goals and really played great defense and came through with some big performances by a lot of different people. It seemed like, just from my perspective, watching the fourth quarter, you guys just turned it on and had a little bit more than they did at the end uh, at crunch time. We did. Uh, Char Davis came off the bench and uh, just did a heck of a job coming off the bench, and at the high post, he's... Uh, Real agile, he can shoot the ball from that area or he can penetrate, and he came off the bench and just did a heck of a job for us tonight. Okay, let's go over to Lester for a second here and uh, get his opinion of what transpired here tonight. You guys show a lot of balance all season long. You got a lot of different heroes. Uh, how did you see the game? What were the critical things that you wanted to take care of? We wanted to just pick the defense up in the second half and knock down the easy shots and just win the game. <laughs> let's take a look at a, a highlight that involves you here and uh, getting out of the break you guys wanted to beat them down the floor huh yeah we're, we've been running good all season so why not stop now just keep running now are you gonna have any trouble uh, resting tonight and getting back up for the morrow afternoon no I ain't gonna have no problem <laughs> okay let's let's go quickly to Dick is only to ask him about that Westbrook Walnut Grove matchup tomorrow uh, what do you think of those guys I know you're busy preparing for your game but they've got a, a senior outfit that'll be very rugged uh, Laboudier is a real good ball player. Their point guard, uh, they're well coached. Steve uh, Turnis does a great job. Uh, they've got some kids that like to dribble penetrate real well too. And um, like I said, we're just happy to get through this one. And uh, our kids will be ready to play tomorrow. And we know it'll be a tough game tomorrow also. But uh, we'll be ready for the challenge. These kids showed a lot of heart today, and they play with emotion, as you know. And uh, um, it's hard to control that or contain that uh, because they are emotional and if you do too much of that they're not going to be able to play their game and uh, we're just happy to advance and look forward to tomorrow's game. Pre-game ritual might be a, a superstition. I had a meal at Mancini's. Do they open early for brunch? Well, it's either there or the St. Clair Broiler. The St. Clair Broiler has been one of our favorite spots too, so either one, whatever uh, we choose to go to, we just hope we come out on top tomorrow. Okay, congratulations Dick and good luck tomorrow afternoon. Hey, we got a plug in for both those fine establishments. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and wrap things up, tell you how you can own a copy of this exciting highlights from tonight's game. St. Agnes, the winner, they've bumped off the defending state champs from Maple River. We'll return to State Tournament 94 in just a moment. Hey, sports fans. Dennis Green here for the winning sales team at Boyer Ford Trucks. Only knowledgeable, friendly, and courteous sales pros make the team at Boyer. They've got competitive prices, great trade-in allowances, and big playmaking financing abilities. Did you know that Boyer has the largest inventory of new Ford trucks in the business? 
and they're backed by the biggest and best trained parts and service operations to keep your truck in the field. Call on Boyer when you're in the market for an affordable truck. Be right there. Old Buck's been busy ever since he heard the news. What news? This, new Buckchel gel. Oh, it's the same fast broadleaf weed control we expect from Buckchel. Except now it's in a concentrated water-soluble gel pack. We can say goodbye to jug disposal. Old Buck's up to something. New Buckchel gel, the same fast, dependable broadleaf weed control in easy handling gel packs. Whoa, great job, Buck. <laughs> You like milk and it's sugar. You like milk and it's sugar. You like milk and it's sugar. You fill up in the light. You got energy and drive it. You like milk and it's sugar. Milk, it does a body good with calcium for healthy teeth, riboflavin to help release energy, and protein to help build muscle. When you drink milk, it shows. You like milk and it's A most entertaining day and a most entertaining game wraps up here with St. Agnes winning 63-56. to And Dick Cazzoni talked about uh, Char Davis, 11 points off the bench and a great job on the boards. Lester Jackson, a real pest on defense. The, this whole St. Agnes team plays a very good uh, team defense, but Lester Jackson was blocking passing lanes, swatting balls away throughout that second half. And uh, he played a tremendous ball game. They did. They played an in-your-face style of man-to-man -man defense. They also played a 1-3-1 very effectively. And I think defense is really the name of the game for them. Now, he's six foot one, but he showed us that he can get above the rim <laughs> and jam the ball down. On a fast break, uh, Lester Jackson provided our TCF play of the game. He sure did. Long rebound came out. Nice lead pass up court. He took care of the rest. Lester Jackson... With 15 points in the game, also is our American Dairy Association player of the game. Now, he scored nine points in the first half. He missed all three of his free throws, which I'm sure is a concern to Dick Gazzoni. But he was our American Dairy Association player of the game. He'll receive a certificate and a donation sent to his school on behalf of your local dairy farmers who remind you, milk, it does a body good. This is not the home floor for the Yankees, but they are in the neighborhood, and uh, they'll uh, bring their fans here tomorrow afternoon for the semifinal matchup, the second game tomorrow on our schedule. Before we leave here courtside, we want to remind you what the lineup is like after today's action. Faribault Bethlehem Academy the only a team left in the field in the championship bracket that was here last year. Morris area winning. Those two teams will square off at 12.30. Westbrook, Walnut Grove, and St. Agnes meeting around 2.30 here at the Civic Center. So that's our uh, Class A semifinal lineup. The uh, AA uh, lineup tomorrow night has Moorhead against Minneapolis Washburn, Moundsview against Hopkins. So eight teams are still alive for two championships. We would like to salute the winners of today's state high school basketball tournament games. In fact, just making it to the state tournament demonstrates a championship by all the schools represented here this week. The players, coaches, teachers, parents, and the entire student body should all be congratulated. The makers of Pepsi are proud to sponsor the broadcast of the Minnesota Boys State High School Basketball Tournament and wish good luck to all participating teams in the spirit of good sportsmanship. A great way to wrap it up here in the Class A quarterfinal game. Maple River, the defending champs in the tournament for the third year in a row, but they are defeated by St. Agnes, 63-56. to Any final comments? I just thought it was a great day of basketball. Semifinal action tomorrow should be just as good or even better. Again, Class A in the afternoon, and the semis and the double-A semis are tomorrow night. We'll have it all for you right here on Channel 9. Let's go over to Jim Gilliland. Thank you, Dick and Janet. Nice job, nice ball game. Great way to end the day, as you both alluded to. St. Agnes moving on. Maple River, hearts are a little heavy tonight in Mapleton, Minnesota Lake, Amboy, and Good Thunder. But they do have the championship trophy from last year. Well, we want to remind you that there were some other games going on tonight. Uh, Purdue beat Kansas behind Glenn Robinson's 44 points in the NCAA tournament. So they move on to play Duke in the finals of that regional. And in the West Regional, uh, Louisville trailing Arizona by nine at the half. The winner of that game to meet Missouri in the finals of the West Regional. In the NIT, a fellow named Askia Jones from Kansas State threw in 62 points tonight to lead his team to a win. His second most po points ever scored in an NCAA postseason game. I don't have number one on my fingertips. I 
think it might have been Austin Carr back for Notre Dame about 20 years ago. So that wraps it up basketball-wise. We want to remind you that you are eligible to purchase a highlight tape from KMSP. And you do so by sending $32 plus $3 for shipping and handling to KMSP TV 11358 Viking Drive, Eden Prairie, 55344. Allow six to eight weeks for delivery. If you want more information, call 946-5629. And please be sure to specify which tape you want. You want the hockey, you want the girls' basketball, or you want the boys' basketball. Four more games tomorrow. It's generally speaking the best day uh, in tournament competition because you got the jitters behind you. you got everybody playing to go to the championship game on Saturday. So we'll look forward to that, and we'll be with you again starting at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for the Class A semifinal. So for our broadcast crew, Dick Bramer, Janet Carvin, and Jeff Grayson and Andy Skugman and all of the fine folks in the truck on the floor upstairs with the high cameras turning on the lights turning them off right now as in Steve Painovich's case this is Jim Gilliland saying so long from the Civic Center see you tomorrow at 1230